welcome you all once again to marine mechanic videos and today we are going to talk something very interesting which whenever you go to bottom platform or emergency fire pump you must wonder how does the priming arrangement for such centrifugal pump work yes the topic for the day is centrifugal pump priming arrangement so you might be having a main seawater pump or ballast pump or scrubber pump or even emergency fire pump which requires some sort of priming arrangement whatever may be the suction head it requires a priming arrangement so have you ever wondered how does the priming arrangement work let's watch this video so here is the pictorial representation of the centrifugal pump priming system as you can see here is the motor shaft coupled to the pump shaft where you are going to have the impeller and casing which I have represented here. So I repeat once again from the motor there is a coupling coupled to the pump shaft and then instead of drawing the pump here for simplicity I have drawn it here just indicated it as a circle. So on the pump shaft after the coupling you are going to have a friction clutch which is beveled like this forming a beveled ear arrangement and this is going to be made of some abrasive material so that it has some friction so as the motor starts to rotate the friction clutch starts to rotate and along with that the engaged the bevel arrangement is going to rotate and this shaft is going to drive the air extraction pump which is simply the liquid ring pump so, as the liquid ring pump rotates, it's going to have its suction and discharge. So, you're going to have a small tank, which is similar to this arrangement. And the suction to the air extraction pump is from here. It goes, and then the discharge is back to the tank. Now, the liquid ring pump, as it takes suction, it sucks the air from the suction side of the main centrifugal pump or from the casing the pipeline to the suction of the air extraction pump is connected to the suction line of the main centrifugal pump or to the casing of the main centrifugal pump you can trace the lines here it goes through a float check valve and then a filter and you can have this check valve or here either of these two will be there and through the filter it goes to the main air extraction pump so as the air extraction pump takes suction from this tank it's going to suck all the air from the casing or the suction line into the pump and then it discharges back to the tank now on the discharge side nothing is going to be there so there is no discharge pressure acting on this piston there's going to be a spring here that spring pushes the piston this way which means the piston is going to push this way and the lever ensures the friction clutch, clutch is attached to the drive which means the air extraction pump is going to rotate and continue the suction and discharge from the tank back to the tank now the complete air or vapor whatever is there on the suction line or the main centrifugal pump casing will be extracted by this air extraction pump and put it inside the tank now the tank level might go up or the air has to escape that will whatever water level raises here it will drop down to the engine room bilges so when the water starts to come to the suction line or the prime the centrifugal pump casing it starts to discharge so the pump starts developing some pressure and as this pressure acts on the piston now the piston, the water pressure is going to be more than the spring pressure and it's going to depress the spring so the lever is going to move this way disengaging the drive for the air extraction pump so as long as there is water on the discharge side of the pump the air extraction pump doesn't rotate it is stopped if there is no water pressure on the discharge side the air extraction pump is engaged by this mechanism and it continuously takes suction and discharge from the tank back to the tank which ensures air or any vapor on the suction line of the centrifugal pump is extracted however you have a gauge glass here 
if there is no water inside the tank, then there is no point of having the air extraction pump running continuously. It's never going to prime the centrifugal pump. So during a watch, it's actually good enough to check the water level in the tank so that whenever you start your centrifugal pump from the remote condition in your ECR, the water is going to get sucked and then discharged back to the tank and then air is also sucked. So this is completely automatic operation, it doesn't have uh, require any human interaction. Thus, only thing what we have to ensure is the condition of the friction clutch and uh, ensure that the operating pistons and spring are free enough to move, the linkages has to be greased and the air extraction pump has an impeller and that has to be maintained as per the manufacturer. Ensure the filter is clean over here and the float check valve has to be clean. There should be no marine growth over here, which means it will be always open. So that should not be there. So to summarize, if there is no water pressure on the discharge side, the spring force acts this direction, which means the lever, when it is like this, it will be pulled and the friction cuts engages, which means the air extraction pump is going to rotate, sucking all the air from the casing and discharging it back to the tank. When there is a discharge pressure, as the centrifugal pump gets primed, the discharge pressure of the water is going to act on this piston, push the piston this way, which means the lever is going to come this way, and this is disengaged back. The air extraction pump stops to rotate.